I can't wait for Paradox Rift to come out on November 3rd. I'm pretty sure that's the date. It's on screen. Paradox Rift coming soon. Hey, Nick with Nightcard TCG. And today, I, I know, <laughs> I know when we get the set, I'm going to eat my words, but I can't wait for Paradox Rift. I have a couple of decks lined up, the things that I'm trying to play, things that I'm trying to work on. But I did see this, this really cool wrong move. I did see this really cool Roaring Moon deck from Andrew Mahone over at Tricky Gym. He was uh, live streaming it on Twitch. It looks really cool. I saw the list. I said, let's talk about it. We'll make a video. We'll, you know, talk about the list. Maybe some things I might change, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to get into that. But before we do, if you haven't already, do me a favor, like, subscribe, comment. All that kind of stuff tells YouTube this is a good channel. Other people should watch it. I have a personal goal of hitting 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And if we hit that goal... I have a really cool giveaway plan. So uh, hit the button. It's a win-win. Anyway, uh, we're going to go over to Poke Gear. I have a link to that in the video description. That's how you can make these deck lists and export the image. And it's really cool. So uh, go ahead, check it out. And let's get straight to the video. We have to talk about Roaring Moon. And one of the things that Paradox Rift is giving us is now these ancient and future cards. If you've played Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, we have Paradox Pokemon. They are versions we don't know into what capacity but they are versions of pokemon that exist in the timeline we know it but they're really old that's the ancient or they're really futuristic and that's the future so we're going to be looking at this ancient it has a tag similar to single strike or rapid strike wood uh, and i really do like cards with those monikers because it's it, i like when cards have like a subset of things that can interact with each other i, I i'm a big fan of that so anyway, we got this Roaring Moon EX. It is a basic EX Pokemon, 230 health, two retreat costs, weak to grass. Not that big of a deal, really. Uh, and we have a cool, very, I feel like I've said cool a bunch already, so I have to change up my words. We have an interesting attack, Frenzied Gouging for two Dark and a Colorless. Knock out your opponent's active Pokemon. Just gone, obliterated, done. If your opponent's active Pokemon is knocked out in this way, this Pokemon does two hundred damage to itself that's a lot of damage but we're not knocking ourselves out technically so we will be, we will be left with 30 health and then for the same energy attack requirement to darken the cause calamity storm 100 damage you can discard a stadium in play if you do this attack does 120 more damage so we can hit for 100 we can hit for 220 or we can hit for it doesn't matter how much we just knock out our opponent's active um Okay, so I, I couldn't remember what the Jirachi, I have a, <laughs> I have a proxy of the Jirachi printer because I couldn't remember what it did and I wasn't sure if it would interact with Roaring Moon, but anyway, we're good there. So really cool, the idea is we just put a Roaring Moon in play, we accelerate a bunch of energies to it, and now we could just go ahead and hit with Frenzy Gouging. So, oh, the U should be over there. Some of the other Pokemon we have are things like Mew EX for three Dark Energies or three Colorless Energies. We only have Dark Energies in the deck, but the, the actual Pokemon needs three Colorless Energies. Genome Hack and choose one of your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks and use it as this attack. And we have Restart. Uh, one second turn, you may draw cards until you have three cards in your hand. So cool ability. It has free retreat. I don't know how often we're going to be powering up genome hacking my you know we don't have great ways of accelerating to non-dark type pokemon uh we have luminion to help us find a supporter and we have squawk ability squawk and seized during your first turn you may discard your hand and draw six cards can't use more than one squawk and seize ability during your turn so we have a cool way of uh not only getting rid of our hand putting energies into the discard pile we'll talk about why that's important in a moment but we can get a fresh set of cards. We also have Motivate. This is actually pretty good for our first turn going second because we can attach a single ba uh, basic energy to this thing and then we can attach up to two basic energies from our discard to one of our benched Pokemon. So the way this goes is we use Squawk and Seize to discard some of our uh, dark energies. Then we can attach an energy to Squawk ability use something like dark patch which allows us to attach a basic dark energy from our discard to one of our bench dark pokemon oh wait roaring moon's basic dark pokemon so we can and it's gonna you know it doesn't have to be basic but it's a dark pokemon on the bench so now we attach to the active 
use Dark Patch onto this Roaring Moon, and then we can motivate to get two more Dark Energies from the Discord onto this Roaring Moon, and we're powering it up before our opponent even knows what happened. Now, there is always the chance that they just boss it up, something like that, KO it, but 230 health isn't the easiest to KO, and we do have this Ancient Booster Energy Capsule, which is a tool card that we can attach to our Ancient Pokemon, and we get 60 extra health, and we recover from special conditions and can't be affected by any special uh, conditions. So now this 230 two prize basic Pokemon becomes 290 health with this uh, ancient booster energy capsule. So it's gonna be a little bit hard for our opponent to go ahead and just decide to KO it, which is really, really cool. How are we gonna get those dark energies into the discard pile? Well, we have Squawk and Seize, but we need to find the dark energies first. So we have Earthen Vessel. You can only play this card if you discard another card from your hand. Search your deck for up to two basic energies, reveal them and put it into your hand. So we can discard an energy with Earthen Vessel, right, hypothetically. Search our deck for two energies. Then use Squawk Billy or use Radiant Greninja, concealed cards, discard an energy card from your hand to draw two cards. So now we can discard an energy with uh, Earthen Vessel, we can discard an energy with Radiant Greninja, we have Squawk Ability, Squawk and Seize, we got Ultra Ball, discard two cards from your hand to search a deck for any Pokemon you want. We have a lot of ways of discarding energies. Then uh, on top of that, we have uh, Pokestop, which has the chance. Uh, we play the, When we use the card, when we use the effect, we look at the top three cards of our deck, put any item cards into our hand and the other cards go into the discard pile. So there's a chance energy cards will go into there, but honestly, it's what, <laughs> what's gonna happen is you're gonna discard all three engine booster caps of energies because that's what would happen to me. Um, so those, those are the ways to you know get energies into the discard and then we can get them out of the discard with dark patch and motivate. So motivate here actually pretty useful and it's another way to power up this Mew EX because like I said, dark patch only accelerates to dark Pokemon. Mew is a clearly a psychic type. So motivate will allow us to do that and it will help in some matchups like, you know, a Giratina matchup. You know, we can just hit for lost impact. It'll hit, we can use big damage. Um, I don't know what else. It's, it's honestly not, I don't know how useful it's really gonna be. Because Cham Pao, we don't do any damage because we don't have water energies. We don't copy uh, Storm Slash on a Zacian V or Brainwave on a Gardevoir. We don't do any damage because we don't have any Psychic Energies attached. Um, I don't know what else. Charizard's a good one. Um, I guess this can copy Iron Hands if we dealt damage to it. We can copy, like, let's say we hit it with Calamity Storm for 220 damage. Well, it's still, I think it still has 10 health left. So we can go ahead and copy Ampu very much on the Iron Hands EX to take an extra prize when we knock it out, which is really cool. So that we can go ahead and, and get three prizes off of that EX instead of just the two. Um, yeah, that's kind of, I, I want this over there. It's been bothering me this whole time. Um, <laughs> and this really should be, that's the order because this is our main attacker, support attacker, draw, support, 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 right? That's how I do things. It's just, I couldn't do it otherwise. We have our Pokemon Search. Ultra Ball and Battle VIP Pass. We talked about energies with Earth and Vessel. We can get them back out of the discard with uh, dark, the Dark Patch. We have a little bit of mobility with Switch Cart. Not only does this allow us to move our basic Pokemon from the active, which all of our Pokemon are basic, we also hear tw heal 20 damage from the Pokemon that goes from the active to the bench, which is pretty cool. We also have two copies of Escape Rope. We have a Pal Pad to recover some supporters. Poke Gear to find supporters. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. Take a supporter card you find there and put it into your hand. That's really, really useful. We talked about Poke Stop already, Ancient Booster Capsule Energy, and now into the supporters. We'll just skip, skip right ahead. We have 12 basic dark energies. We have a copy of Penny. Put one of your basic Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your hand. This is a really good way of if our opponent doesn't knock out this Roaring Moon, or they don't knock out the Squawk Ability or something or a Luminion, it allows us to pull the Luminion back so we can use it the next turn. Uh, it's just a good way of denying prizes. It's a good way of getting something like the Squawk Ability, the, the Mew that we might have started, or the Luminion that we might have started out of play so we don't have to worry about it. Um, and we can deny those prizes. It also allows us, if we have like just one Ancient Booster Capsule Energy, and we have it on a Roaring Moon that already has damage on it. We can go ahead Penny, and then we recover the Ancient Booster Capsule Energy. Um, 
and we can attach it to a new Pokemon. So it's kind of cool. Uh, Judge, each player shuffles their hand into their deck, draw four cards, just a little bit of disruption. Iono is similar. In the early game, it's a really good draw supporter for you. In the late game, it's really annoying disruption for your opponent because each player is going to shuffle their hand and put it to the bottom of their deck. And then each player draws cards for the number of prize cards they have remaining. So it's a little bit of a comeback card. Really nice. Boss's Order, switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon into their active spot. This is great because if they have something really big that they're trying to build up or something really important, we can go ahead, pull it up into the active, and then hit it with Frenzied Gouging to just instantly KO it. Or if it's already been damaged, we can go ahead and use Calamity Storm so that we can, uh, you know, take the knockout or something like that. In it is worth noting, and I, someone, um, someone who commented on a previous video, what they did was they bossed up a Radiant Greninja. They used Mew EX's genome hacking because they were able to then copy Moonlight Shuriken and put 90 damage on two Comfies that my opponent, their opponent had. Uh, and they took two free prizes, basically, leaving the Greninja in the active at the same time, which is really, really cool use of Mew. And it made me happy. I think they were playing Call of Lugia when they did it. And then we have four copies of professor sada's metal again has an ancient marker or the ancient tag moniker whatever you want to call it choose up to two of your ancient pokemon for each of those pokemon put a basic energy from your discard pile to that pokemon if you do draw three cards so again we really want to get those energies into the discard pile for dark patch for motivate for professor sada's metal all those things accelerate from the discard so now we can have two wrong moon ex's professor sada's metal get a dark energy from the discard to each of them, draw three cards, dark patch, motivate, and power these things up really, really fast so that we could just get a head. The, the whole idea of this deck, at least from how it seems, I haven't tried it, how it seems, is that you want to get ahead on prizes first. You really want to just go ahead, get up there, take two prizes, your opponent counter KOs. Go up there, take two prizes, your opponent counter KOs. Take two prizes, win, right? That's kind of how this deck wants to function. Um, again, we can copy attacks, we can power things up pretty quickly, search for supporters. It's a really interesting deck. Uh, I don't, I don't know exactly what I would change. At first I was like, I don't know how useful the squawk ability is, but then I remembered it had motivate. And by remembered, I mean, I saw it had motivate when I was reading the ability. I don't know exactly what I changed. It seems very simple, very straightforward. I might want I, I do really like how the Mew has free retreat. It's really a good pivot in between setting up our Frenzy Gouging. Because remember, if we have this Roaring Moon in the active, we can't Dark Patch to it. So we can use the Mew as a pivot. So for in between turns, Mew's in the active. We can Dark Patch, set up this uh, Roaring Moon, and then free retreat into the Roaring Moon, which is really nice. Um, I, I feel like the, we have the Poke Gears, which is really nice to be able to find those supporters that's why we don't have to rely on aluminium but i don't know i mean i'm sure the penny would be useful i'm sure the judge and iona is useful i don't know i feel like a third boss would be really good third boss would be really good i would i would love it if you just stuck an iron hands in here with like two lightning energies and then there you go we could just uh power it up with like the motive eh, it probably doesn't work right we don't have a way to get those energies onto at the same turn, so our opponent would be able to boss KO it most likely. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a fan of this. I'm, I'm very interested to try it out. I'm going to be printing the proxies as soon as I'm done recording this. Give it a go. But if, let me know what you think of Roaring Moon. Is this something you want to try? Is, have you have you tried it already? What would you change? I want to know from you, so please put it down in the comments below. But that's going to do it for us today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Find us for again. If you have, like, subscribe, comment. Thank you very much to Tricky Jim for shoving off this deck i think it's really cool and i'm excited to try it and uh, yeah that's gonna do it i'll see you next time i want to give a special shout out to the youtube members black winds mike the highest fernando ortiz chin pakoman and eric and thank you all so so much for your support it really means a lot to me and if you want to become a channel member you can go ahead and click the channel member button somewhere at the bottom of the page i'm not really sure i haven't done it myself